WBNE. Howdy, Yokes. Before we get started, I do want to let you know that this episode of Bacon and Eggs, all about Hawkeye Episode 5, will contain spoilers for both Hawkeye Episode 5, which is pretty par for the course for this show. If you're ever curious moving forward, if we've done an episode on it, that means there's spoilers. I also want to let you know, however, that there are spoilers for Spider-Man No Way Home in this episode. This is that episode... Yeah, we haven't recorded yet, but I'm willing to bet there will be. So just as a blanket statement, if you haven't seen either of them, go ahead and go watch them and then come back to the show. Otherwise, let's go ahead and get started. Howdy, Yokes, and welcome back to Bacon and Eggs. I'm Tyler Carlin. And I'm Ethan Chill. And today is Monday. And this is Bacon and Eggs. So put the suit back on. And reveal the baddie. Because today we're bringing you Hawkeye. I'm gonna get out of bed and start my day. Cook up a breakfast of bacon and eggs. I won't check my phone till after my coffee. And Hawkeye episode five, Ronin, directed by Bert and Birdie, came out on December 15th, 2021, which was five days ago. Currently sitting at 100% for the individual episode on Rotten Tomatoes. I think the show is down to like a 94. I don't know. I think it's 92. Pulling at, 92. Pulling it out of nowhere. I like this episode a lot. Uh, it's got one of my favorite scenes in all of television in it, purely because it's got uh, H- Haley uh, Steinfeld and Haley Steinfeld and, and Florence Pugh sitting down Florence for a girls' Pugh. dinner. Yeah, and eating macaroni and cheese, which like, I mean, everything about that, I'm all about. If only Pete's um, dog was there, it would might have been the perfect scene. Like it, yeah, it would have been very good. Uh, Pete's dog was hanging out with Clint instead. Let's talk about the uh, the progression here. Beginning of the episode, we get to see what happened to Yelena during the blip. Yeah. And it's the first ever from the perspective of the blippy we've ever gotten. Mm-hmm. That was an incredible scene. It was incredible. Where she goes to, I... like, punch the mirror and blips in the middle of it. Yeah. Oh, and man. Then, uh... And then, uh. Here's like... my only thing. This is not against Florence. This is against the writer. I'm going to angle myself down okay. a little bit. Uh, I didn't feel like Yelena was playing the same Yelena in the beginning of the episode as she was later in the episode. And not the same Yelena we got in Black Widow during that opening scene. I mean, I know it's the same Yelena. I'm not saying it's a scroll or anything. I just think it was like tonally it wasn't the character I've come to expect from her. Uh, I would say that the end, the middle episode, the 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 Kate Bishop scene, Yelena is consistent with Black Widow the movie for me. Yes, I would agree with that as well. I'm talking about that opening scene. I don't think it needs to be consistent with anything else. We haven't ever seen that period in Yelena's life. I guess that's true. Like we don't really know what was going on there. But that was after her and Natasha got all back together and stuff. So I don't know. Just felt a little weird to me. It's just a little complaint. I'm not mad about it. Yeah, I, I don't know. It didn't. It didn't feel weird to me that that tracked. I mean, like, yeah, she's she's back in Natasha's life, and it, it's a couple years down the road from that. Um, yeah. But also, like, you know, she's still having to to track down the, the Black Widow mess, right? Like, yeah. So she's she's clearly going through something related to that. And then she loses yeah. five years of her life and her sister in the exact same instant. Yeah. And like that has to be tough. And then they immediately just switch us to, you know, happy go lucky. Let's hang out and eat mac and cheese, Elena. Yeah. And like, obviously, those are the same people, but they're different faces of the same people because oh, she yeah. turns in, in that conversation. Right. When when Kate starts defending Clint Barton. She's like, no, are you saying that my sister was collateral damage? That's not what she says. She goes, are you saying my sister collateral damage? Clint Barton could play paint. Clint could, Barton could, could, could paint the world with the blood he has shed. Yeah. Uh, clean, so she's clean she's not happy with old old hockey. I think this is so like I think it's very easy to watch this and be like. Oh, Clint's got all these enemies. I think the enemies they've chosen here are very interesting because you've got not just, you know, you've got uh, Maya, who's very upset about Clint going in and doing everything about the Ronin. 
And then Yelena, who is mad at Clint at Hawkeye, she doesn't care about the Ronin stuff. Yeah. She doesn't care that he went around and murdered all those people. She's using that as a defense against Kate, Kate Bishop, but that's not why she hates him. No. And I just want to say uh, that I, I called the Wilson Fisk thing and I called Eleanor being the bad guy thing. Well, I think Eleanor being the bad guy, I mean, they, they painted that one pretty clear. I, I, just, I just want to point out the fact that I said that from the jump. Yeah. We never trusted Fisk. her for a single second. I, I, I know we had mentioned Wilson Fisk early on because we thought that's who was hyping up Maya at the baseball game, right? That's what it was? At the baseball game? Or the t-ball game or whatever? No, it was at a uh, it was, it was a karate sparring dojo. Match. Yeah, yeah, dojo. Uh, yeah, I still think that's the case. Yeah, and I'm with you there. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I thought yeah, I was so hyped when Wilson Fisk showed up on the screen. Yeah, should be a good next episode. We got, you know, now that it's the series finale, or the season one finale at least, we got the whole cast of characters revealed. Yeah. I still don't feel like we're at finale level stuff, though. You know what I mean? I mean, like, it, yeah, oh, yeah, but like, there's no rules here. It could be three hours long, right? Like, there's, it's yeah. not gonna be. But there's no rules here. They could do whatever they want. Toby Maguire could be in it. Toby Maguire could be in it. So, what are you doing? The dog was scratching at the door, and then he, when I opened, it didn't come in. But I didn't look down, so I thought he came in. Ha. <laughs> Uh, uh, yeah, Toby Maguire could be in it. Um, I very much doubt that. That would be a wild. Ben Affleck could be in it. I don't in think fact, he could, actually. Kingpin is on a pretty short list of characters where the original actor cannot reprise the role. Who is the original actor? In the in the Ben Affleck Daredevil? Yeah. Uh, oh, gosh. What is his name? He's the Green Mile dude. Michael Clark Duncan. Yeah. I forgot about that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No, he's not coming back. He That's is not coming back. Though. You're correct about that. Yeah. Yeah. He was good, though. He was. He's a good kingpin. I think I have not seen that movie in a long, long, long time. I Me mean, neither. But I remember really liking that movie. I remember so, I next know. to nothing about it. <laughs> I've seen it a few times. There's a scene where like they're standing outside and he's like, it's about to rain. And she's like, how did you know? And he's like, temperature just dropped two or three degrees. Winds changed pressure changed and then whoosh, it rains and then he's like i can see better when it rains which i thought that was like a really cool really cool thing well ben Who's affleck that? probably not gonna um reprise his role as daredevil it was jennifer garner uh i'll tell you who also probably not gonna reprise the role from the original daredevil is john favreau as foggy nelson <laughs> That would be wild. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, it would it would definitely be crazy for Kevin Feige to be like, Charlie Cox is our daredevil. And also, this is where the spoiler comes in. Also, we're going to put him in Spider-Man. But psych, the daredevil that's going to show up in Hawkeye is Ben Affleck. Ben Affleck. <laughs> As Batman. <laughs> <laughs> But Kevin Feige, he says there's no rules anymore, baby. Maybe. Yeah, ben but Affleck I mean, like, he Daredevil. also hasn't made any kind of statement like Charlie Cox is our daredevil about literally anybody else, right? Yeah. Yeah. Which, like, like makes people me are think like, oh, let Chris Evans go back as, as the human torch. And he's like, mm hmm. <laughs> and then people are like, yeah, I don't know about Charlie Cox as well. <laughs> Charlie Cox is the guy. Let's let's get it. Let Let's, me be very clear about be one very thing. Clear. Charlie Cox was, be very clear was about always literally the guy. One, one, let me be clear for once ever. <laughs> I believe in Charlie Cox. I believe in Charlie Cox as Daredevil. He's a very I good almost, lawyer. So as I was going to watch this, I was turning off Netflix and opening Disney+. Plus, and as I was closing Netflix, it was like, hey, have you thought about watching Daredevil recently? And I was like, honestly, No. But now that you've mentioned it, I may watch both seasons in one sitting and just blow Ethan off entirely. Uh, well, that would have sucked. It would have sucked. I'd have been mad. But I would have. I would have been able to watch Daredevil. There are more important things than you watching the Daredevil TV show. Yeah. If it wasn't for the fact that we have, I think, like, two more rows of Marvel Mondays, I think, 
There's a lot more of these we have to do, right? Because we have to do Book of Boba Fett after this. And I don't know what comes after that, but it's got to be something. Yeah, I, I think there's a, the third season of The Mandalorian. Like d- immediately following Book of Boba Fett? I believe Fett? so, yeah. Oh, that'd be cool. I think concurrent, like it, it like halfway through. There's no way they're releasing two Star Wars shows. That's at the what same they said time. last year. That would be wild. And then maybe Stranger Things works its way in. Anyway, all I know is we don't have enough time off to do Daredevil, the Netflix show, for no. a while. No, because Book of Boba Fett, I think, starts Friday. Yeah, it starts immediately following this. Yeah. So, uh, b- both will be out by the next time we re- uh, do do a Hawkeye episode. Yes. Although I have no idea Which, when we're going to do that. Speaking of everybody, I know we call it Marvel Mondays and we say new episodes every Thursday. I also know that that has been a little wonky lately. I just want to let you know, Ethan and I just both got new jobs. Ethan got a puppy. It's the holidays. We got excuses. Thanks for sticking with us. Thanks for hanging out. And I mean this from the bottom of my heart. I'm sorry. Eventually it will get better. Maybe not immediately, though. Probably not until the new year. Yeah. It's going to be a little wonky until then. But then things should cool down. Especially for the Hawkeye show, because we generally do this on, on, on the weekend. And this weekend is Christmas. Yeah. Now, maybe we can do it on Wednesday, like the day it comes out. Maybe. I do want to talk about the Hawkeye show in relation to Daredevil. I don't know if we did, if we didn't do this segment of our show, I don't know that I'd be watching Hawkeye. Why is that? I just... You a big Clint Barton hater now? No, I'm not. I. It's not even that I don't like the show. I'm glad we do this segment so that it forces me to watch Hawkeye and I get 45 minutes of tearful enjoyment with one of my favorite actresses in my favorite universe. Like, I, I love that we do this for that reason. I just feel like maybe life is getting too much in the way or maybe I'm just not as interested in the MCU as I once was. But I don't know. I just feel like it's not as... I'm not as like drawn in like, oh, I got to know what happens next. Like I saw it was Wilson Fisk at the end of this episode and I was like, yeah, I don't know, man. I guess we'll find out what happens next week. I mean, yeah, I guess. I don't know. When I was watching Spider-Man No Way Home the other day and, and those characters showed up, I was like, I was clapping in my seat. I was leading those cheers in the theater. I just wasn't doing that with Hawkeye. I don't think anybody's expecting you to clap in a movie theater about this show. It'd be really weird. It doesn't come out in theaters. Right. But you know what I mean? Like, I just wasn't getting. I don't know. I don't feel like we're building enough on the on the MCU world. And maybe that's good. I mean, we've been asking for that forever, right? Like, I want something that we can just live in. That just like it doesn't change the stakes for the whole thing. Loki was too big for a TV show. I want something reasonable, maybe Christmas themed. And now we have that. And I feel like. No, maybe I was wrong about that. Yeah. I also get really exhausted watching this show because the whole time I'm just like, Clint, you need a nap. You need a long rest. Refill your spell slots. Eat a potion. Like, God, yeah, buddy. The whole, the whole uh, is he going to make it home for Christmas thing is getting exhausting. Well, also, like two episodes ago, Linda Cardellini was like, hey, it's literally no big deal. Like... You're a superhero. The kids will understand. Right. Try to be home like, next year. You know. But also, if you can't, like, whatever. You're a superhero. Yeah. You save the world. You save the world. You're dealing with a serious problem. Your children got unobliterated from existence because of you. Directly. Yeah. You had a really outsized role in Avengers Endgame. When people say they go to the ends of the earth, you went to the ends of a different planet. Yeah. And dealt with a zombie skull man and slaughtered your own best friend to bring your children back. That's the ends of the earth. He also didn't slaughter her. She slaughtered herself. Slaughtered her. 
threw her right off and th- shot an arrow down to make sure she hit the bottom. Yep, that's how that went down. <laughs> that's totally how Avengers Endgame happened. I think if that was, Yelena would have something to say. Right, but, but the whole the whole point is that she does it. It's a misunderstanding, and they're right. going to figure that out, and they're going to be and buds. You, Yelena's going to be a good guy? Probably not. I think Yelena's going to be a part of the anti-Avengers. Yeah. That's where my money is. With Jack Duquesne, who is it's, honestly probably being framed like he said he was. I like this Jack Duquesne character. Yeah, he's like, I'll be out in no time for your Christmas party. And then once he finds out that Eleanor's the reason that he's in jail, like, not only just because she called the cops on him, but, like, she literally works with Wilson Fisk and is evil. The kingpin. The kingpin. Yeah. Yeah. He's not going to be too happy, and he probably is going to stab her. What is a kingpin? It's the, um... It's the, the, the front pin in bowling. It is? Yeah. Is that why he's a big white dude? Yeah. Except I don't think in, I knew except this. in Daredevil, the movie. Well, yeah, obviously not in Daredevil the movie, which honestly I think that's fine. Truthfully. Yeah, no, I I agree. Just needs to be a big big guy. The the big, big. guy. Big dude. Well, and, and, you know, you can't find a person that's as big as the, the, the guy in Spider-Verse. <laughs> it's not always about the money, Spider-Man. It's about the Mets, baby. Go Mets. What if he says what if it? What if he what says if, it? Yeah, what if he comes out and he's got What if he's like, it's not always about the money, Kate Bishop. It's about the Mets. <laughs> what if, like, canonically, Kingpin owns the Mets? I mean, it's entirely possible. I feel like if he owned the Mets, though, that his his tracksuit people would wear either blue or orange. Uh, I didn't realize that Zico Coconut Water, uh, the translator, was wearing a tracksuit. Kazi? Kazi. Yeah, wearing the red tracksuit. I did not realize that. I didn't put that together. Although, one of the, f- the the scene where the two dudes in the truck, the two chuckleheads in the truck, are talking about their favorite tracksuits in movies and, and pop culture, that was good. That was a good scene. That was good. They're like, the, they're, they're like how can we show you that these dudes are literal grunts? Like Goons of goons. the gooniest. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. The, the goon squad. Yeah. Like, just idiots. I just... I never You think thought, we're Royal Thindenbums? Yeah, I think <laughs> we are. I never thought that Marvel would put in such a boring character. Like, honestly, I was like, the tracksuit mafia, that's, that's not real. You're not trying to sell me on the tracksuit mafia. You had me buy into, like, Thanos the Titan is made of purple. Yeah. And I was like, we took that seriously. And now you want me to take tracksuit mafia seriously? I'm sorry. Tracksuit mafia is a gamer tag. <laughs> yeah, I would agree. <laughs> I mean, they're just, they're expendable henchmen, right? Like that's the whole point. Right. They're and now they're in thug. the MCU. Yeah. yeah. The Chitari, but less... CG. Less bad. Less bad. Like the Less worst smart. army in the whole universe. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so what did you think of the episode? I feel like I've been talking for 20 minutes straight. Uh, I thought it was great. I very much enjoy the show. I don't have the feelings like you do at all. I think the show is great. Um, I would definitely watch it week to week. As I you have think- with all the other ones. Except for What If. Uh, I wish I liked What If. I just haven't seen it. I haven't watched it. You know what I you know what I did notice about this show is this show has so much combat. Yeah. Not a negative. It does. But like like WandaVision, they didn't fight anybody for like five episodes. No. And honestly, once they started fighting people is when it sort of went off the rails a little bit. <laughs> yeah, that's when I was like, this sucks. <laughs> yeah. 
Um, they're definitely, you know, they're they're all a different vibe, right? Like, you can tell that the people that make these shows, and I think this is by design, right? The people that make these shows don't talk to each other. Yeah, I think they talk to Kevin, and Kevin's like, ah, right. you can't break this rule, but I like where you're going yeah. with this. Yeah. That being said, like, it, you know, we were talking about this the other day, and I was, I was talking to people about it. Like, I... I don't know what this show, I guess, what is this show trying to retcon? That you don't like Jeremy Renner's character. It's just supposed to make me like Clint Barton. I think so, yeah. Okay. I think this is supposed to sell you on I'm Clint I'm not Barton. supposed to be on like, the other side of it like, man, I should go watch the Kenneth Branagh Thor. No, I think I think what happens, well, I think that's part of it because he's in it. But I think what happens is like over and over again, they have Clint explaining like, yeah, it sucks being Ronin because you're brainwashed. And I think that what they're trying to do, what a lot of people don't realize is like Clint has been that character more than just when he was Ronin. Like, yeah, he killed some civilians big time when he was working for Loki yeah. as Loki's pawn, you know, yeah, he was working for shield before then. Right. Like he's working yeah, for God knows who before shield. Right. And what you did for Ronan or what you did as Ronan was bad, but you were killing bad people. What you did as as Hawkeye in Avengers, you were just killing regular people. Well, not in Avengers. In Avengers, yeah. In Avengers? In Avengers, he takes out multiple people at a German museum. Oh yeah, you're right. You're right. God. Yeah. There's too many of these movies, man. There's a lot of content. But yeah, they I, definitely I, like I think that Disney and it's got to be the same team working on both Star Wars and Marvel at this point. But Disney has to have like a like a chief retcon officer at this point who has like a whole team of people that are sitting there in a room being like, hmm, whose stock do we need to rise this week? Boba Fett. Yes. Boba <laughs> People liked him, and then he died in a Sarlacc pit. I do think they do. I think they've got little tickers for character stock. Yeah, like a stock ticker. They they measure public opinion of these characters, and they're like, okay, okay, okay. Watch the Hawkeye show. No, I mean, the Hawkeye show is clearly, clearly planned to go live exactly when it did, right? Like, Because I don't think Sp Spider-Man didn't get moved, I don't think, ever. I think it did. I think it was pushed back. I don't think it got delayed, no. I think you could have had either one of those reveals. Uh, truthfully, I think the same thing I said in the Spider-Man episode. You either line this up with Captain America or Falcon and Winter Soldier episode four or Hawkeye episode no, four. Those no, are no, your two I, I don't. I don't think so. I don't. I. I've, I thought about what you said. I don't think that's correct. Really? Because I, I think, I think that's a bigger moment. And I think if the, if we had just watched that in Captain America, I think it would have resonated. Because I don't see a lot of people talking about that. That clear imagery. Yeah, I, I, but I think that's okay because it doesn't have anything to do with Captain America. I think it shows Tom Holland, Peter Parker can lose his sh the same way. He's not as good, so to speak, as uh, our boy, Steve Rogers. Y your boy. Your boy. My boy. Still yeah, not sold. Still my boy. I do think there's a real chance you'll see Chris Evans as, as Mr. F uh, Human Torch. Fantastic. Yeah, it'd be wild if they were like, yeah, come back as Reed Richards instead. Yeah. <laughs> you're you can play you're smart, too cool for Johnny right? Blaze now. Yeah. <laughs> I know he was the cool one, but you're really cool now. Yeah, you're really cool now. What if, he plays, what if Chris Evans comes back as Cyclops? In the third X-Men reboot. I don't think so. That's going to be a niche for me. Who would you cast as the Fantastic Four, Ethan? If you're given the reins right now, Kevin calls you. He says, listen, man, I'm done dealing with these casting directors. I need a fan cast. I need the Fantastic Four right now. I'm the Go. worst person to, to ask. I think Why? I want the Fantastic Four remake less than anybody alive. Yeah, but he's paying you a million dollars to do this. Oh, a uh, million dollars. What do I even know about? There's there's two dudes and a girl and a rock, right? Yeah. I mean, you get the rock. You want the rock to play you, the thing? Yeah. 
No, I don't see it. Okay. Well, then who plays the thing? I don't know anything about the Fantastic Four, man. The last time I interfaced with that series was when you and I saw that god awful movie. Oh man, that was not good. Um, I think you got to go. So my idea on the thing is you got to go like the opposite of Taika Waititi as Korg, right? Because the thing is really like self conscious, and is he? He's yeah. Oh. That's, I mean, in the in the film iterations, he's always been like really embarrassed of the fact that he's this giant rock monster. Oh, Michael Sarah. Michael Sarah as the thing. Yeah. I could see it. Michael Sarah has never been bad in a role. A lot of people don't know that. Um, who would I get to play Reed Richards? Who would I get to play Reed Richards? Elliot Page. No, I don't think so. No, we're going to do the whole cast of Juno. The whole cast as- of Juno. <laughs> okay, so Elliot Page is Reed Richards. Uh, and then... And then the Human Torch is, I guess, Rain Wilson. Yeah, I was gonna in say the Human Torch is Rain Wilson and um, <laughs> Allison Janney as Elastigirl. It's, it's the Invisible Woman. The Invisible Woman. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think we. I don't think we nailed it. No, I don't, we did. I don't think we did. I don't think we did. Johnny Blaze can be Timothy Chalamet. He's not like he doesn't have the, uh, you know, like he's. Uh. I don't know anything about the Fantastic Four. What are they like? Which one's a Slytherin? Reed Richards, right? Doom. 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 Dr. Doom. Yeah. What is man? Re- you know, he'd be a good. Friend what is Doom Reed Richards is Michael- like? He's like uh, he's very very smart. Oscar uh, Isaac. Oscar Isaac could do. Oscar Isaac could do any of them, honestly. Oh, he could do anything. I think bring Jessica Alba back as the Invisible Woman. No, I don't think so. You don't think she's a... I don't know what hole they put her in. I have not heard from Jessica (laughs) Alba in decades. I know that at one time she she was dating somebody... No, at one time she was dating somebody who made... Who makes Pair of Thieves, which is the, like trendy underpants that they sell at target yeah what if they were all like dang it no never mind he's carnage i was gonna say what if they were all like old and we got like woody harrelson to be johnny blaze that could be about that yeah but he's carnage i know i wanted michael keaton as mr fantastic he's vulture um, we made a grave mistake. Did you know that Christian Bale is in Thor: Love and Thunder? Uh, no, I didn't. It hasn't come out yet. Why would I know that? I, guess, I don't know. Do you not read any casting news or anything? Sure, I do, but like I don't memorize the cast of movies that come out next year off the top of my head. Oh man, come on! Uh, Taika Waititi will be in it. Uh, well, he's directing it, so Chris Hemsworth will be in it. Sort of. Not sort of. He'll be in it. I mean, barely. I think he'll be in it for most of it. You think? Yeah, I think Chris Hemsworth is like, yeah, I'm Thor. He's supposed to, no, but I'm, he's not Thor anymore. He's supposed to pass the mantle, right? That's the whole thing. Natalie Portman becomes she Thor, uh, and he has she, to take over. He has to take over as king of Asgard. I think he'll be. I mean, okay. What's the dude's name? Anthony Bourdain. He was in all the Thor movies. Who? Sir Anthony Hopkins. Anthony Hopkins is Odin. Yeah. You want him to play Reed Richards? No. I'm saying he's in the Thor movies, so obviously Chris Hemsworth will be in the Thor movies. Yeah, that's fair, but you said as Thor, and I don't know if that's true. All I know is Hawkeye. The problem is that everybody in the world has been in the MCU already. Wait a minute. Except Timothy Chalamet. Hold on. Wait a minute. No, 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 Ethan. Listen to this. The Invisible Woman, Kristen Bell. Okay. Johnny Blaze, Dax Shepard. No, 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 no. Johnny Blaze. Johnny Blaze is Ghost Rider. Johnny Storm. 
Manny Jacinto. Who? Jason Mendoza from The Good Place. Oh, yes. The Thing. William Jackson Harper. Who's William Jackson Harper? Cheaty from The Good Place. Okay. Mr. Fantastic. Ted Danson. <laughs> Ted Danson. <laughs> and you find a reason for Jamila Jamil to be in this movie. She could play Dr. Doom. <laughs> Jamila Jamil is Mrs. Fantastic. Ted Danson is Dr. Doom. <laughs> no, I think you just let you let J- Jamila Jamil play uh, the Invisible Woman and you just make Kristen Bell Mr. Fantastic and just don't talk about it. Like she just plays Mr. She Fantastic. She plays Reed Richards and just nobody talks about it. Yeah, I like that idea too. Um, Darcy Carden, you can put in there as well. She's Janet. Cool. Yep. Totally. I would love for, for her to play like the new Tony Stark, ro- the new Stark Industries robot voice. Friday? So no, like wh- the whatever the next one after Friday is. Oh, I see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Rescue, I think. Is that the voice inside the suit? I don't know. No, like like an as, as of yet determined one that like Tom's going to make up. Oh, yeah, that'd be good. Once he takes over Stark Industries. We've spent a lot of time this episode talking about who we would cast in a non-existent Fantastic Four remake. I mean, they are making it, right? They have announced that they are making it. Have they? Yeah. That was part of the original big announcement. That was like the last thing was like, oh, by the way. Oh, I can't I can't keep up with the big announcements. Oh, yeah. That was a while ago. That was like, the yeah, I know. And now we're like cheap. here with it. And they're like, yeah, we're we're going to give you Black Panther 2. And that was like four years ago. And I was like, that's never going to happen. Like, that's so far in the future. And now like Thor Love and Thunder comes out in like three months. Yeah. And we get to see it. <laughs> yeah. We get to see a movie with Academy Award winners in it. Yeah. Ain't it wild? Are there any Academy Award winners in this show? There's a nominee. Florence and Pugh. Florence Pugh. There's two nominees. Who's the oh Haley Steinfeld? Yeah. I bet Vera Farmiga's got an uh got an an um uh a, a nomination. Who's Vera Farmiga? The the mom, Eleanor. Oh. She's the oh, love interest fun. from up in the air. Holy crap, you're right. Yeah. She was married in that movie. Up in the air, Oscar contender, never had any reason to be. I mean, yeah, it's very good. But is it Oscar good? I I would say so. Well, it is. I mean, it it was nominated for Oscars. Uh, awards. Nominated for one Oscar. Look at that. For Up in the Air. <laughs> Best Supporting Best Actress. Performance. Well, there we go. Nailed it. That was such a good movie. And she played a character named Alex Garan, which is... Does, I don't think that's how does it's Vincent D'Onofrio... He's gotta. For, for Full Metal Jacket, he's gotta have... a nomination. Nope. One primetime Emmy. That's his only nomination? He has a bunch of nominations, but that's the only one, like, good one. Hmm. For Law and Order? Um, no. Outstanding guest actor in a drama series, Homicide, Life on the Street, for playing John Lange for episode The Subway. That's hmm. the same one that, uh, obviously this was 1993, so not the same year, or 1998, but that's the same one that uh, Dave Matthews got, right? It's for supporting actor, uh, guest actor in a drama series? I believe so. Yeah, it was in the. Uh, let's pull it up. Let me let me make sure I was right. Three wins, twelve nominations, uh, a bunch of Grammys. No, it's not even on here. But that episode won an award. I know that much. Well, anyway, 
Vincent D'Onofrio should have an Oscar nomination for Full Metal Jacket, but he doesn't. So sad day. Who else is no. in this show? I feel like Jeremy Renner has nominations, right? Does, didn't we decide that? Yeah. For, for like uh, for uh, a war movie. Yeah. For, for uh, uh, Hurt, Hurt Locker. Locker. Yeah. Nominated for two Oscars. We talked about this. Yeah. Uh, actor in a supporting role, actor in a leading role. Hurt Locker and The Town. The Town. Not non-respectively. The Ben Affleck movie. Yeah. About the, the, Man, have the, you seen the ads, the trailers for Ambulance, Ambi- L-A-N-C-E? Yes, I have. It looks good. It looks awful. What are you talking about? I saw an ad. Oh, my it's God. It's got Jake Gyllenhaal. Yeah. And he looks terrible. All he does is yell for the whole trailer. Get your helos out of here. I'm like, wow, Jake Gyllenhaal, I didn't realize you were that desperate that you needed to, like, do, like, a like a Los Angeles-based public service disaster movie. Hey, when you're Jake Gyllenhaal and Taylor Swift writes the the biggest hit of all time and it's a 10 minute song about you and people are mean about it. You just take what you can get, man. Yeah. I'm sure Jake Gyllenhaal is hurting real bad over that. I'm sure that affected his life in a way. Maybe you don't know. I mean, I don't know, but he should stop dating women that are, 17 years younger than him. Yeah, I'm with that. So, anyway, it's about rap time here on Bacon and Eggs. Yep. Uh, th- thanks for hanging out with us this week. Yeah, Locking thanks for on, hanging on out the, with us. On the Monday, Marvel Monday show. We got one last week of Hawkeye, and then we start the book of Boba Fett, and then if there's another Mandalorian series, there's that too, and um, then there's like the Marvels, and then... I don't know after that. We have to watch movies. I think this. So this is uh, this is coming out on I guess Tuesday. Happy Monday. Um, and and two days from now we're watching White Christmas. So be ready to talk about that. Uh, and otherwise, if I don't see you, good afternoon, good afternoon, good, good evening, evening, and, and good, good night. night.